Hey guys, this is Kyle at Projection Up, and today I'm gonna to show you how to write a business plan for a non-medical home care business. Uh, now what this video is not gonna be is I'm not gonna write an entire business plan out here in front of you. But what I am gonna do is using a free business plan template available down in the description, get that no strings attached. I'm gonna basically go through this and show you what a typical outline of that business plan would look like with the different sections. And then I'm gonna highlight five key points that you need to make sure your business plan does well in order to get approved for funding. If that is the purpose for, for this video, for your need to make a business plan, if you don't need to get funding and you're still just needing to make a business plan for some maybe internal planning purposes, I still think that you should focus on these five key areas and make sure they're included. But who is Projection Hub? You know, why are we you know credible to be able to talk about this? Uh, we have helped more than 50,000 different small businesses small businesses and startups create financial projections for their business plans, for their loan applications, for their investment pitch decks. The large majority of our customers are actually like Main Street and small businesses. We have worked with a number of businesses that are doing like home health care or non-medical um, home care uh, type of businesses and create financial projections there. And before I was with Projection Hub, I actually spent seven years as a lender um, at a small business lending agency, um, helping businesses package up their loan requests, including, you know, reviewing their business plans and their financial projections. And several of those businesses were home health care and home care related businesses. So I've seen a lot of those uh, in action, kind of know what areas of those need to be focused on to try and get approval from that. Um, if you like this video at all, please give it a thumbs up. That's really helpful for us. Feel free to subscribe to the channel as well. Not all of our content is about home care or that type of stuff, but a lot of our content is about owning a business, running a business, growing a business. So hopefully you can find some extra helpful content there. So I'm going to go ahead and jump into this. Okay, first off, before we jump in, I want you to think about what's the purpose of your business plan. For your industry, maybe non-medical home care, it's maybe not super common or maybe it is common, but it's you know not as obvious as like a restaurant business plan. So maybe your business plan needs to do a little bit of education on the industry itself and the opportunity in the industry and the direction it's heading. But the primary purpose of your business plan is to outline your specific plan for success. You're trying to outline a tangible, realistic roadmap as to why your lender should believe that you're going to be successful with a high degree of confidence. So that's what we're going to do here. And you can see based on this table of contents, kind of the structure we're going to follow. But one thing I want to point out is you'll notice this only goes up to nine, nine pages. A myth that's very common. I would hear this all the time as, as a lender was that, you know, people thought their business plan was better if it was 50 pages long. And that's just not the case. Now, if you need to write a 50 page business plan on your own from like a learning and a planning and feeling confident in what you're doing, definitely do that exercise for you. But what you provide to your lender should be a refined version of that, you know, maybe 10 pages, maybe 15 pages, maybe 20 pages. But if you get much longer than that, you are muddying up the important lending decision details with the technical details of your business that they don't necessarily need to know everything about. You know, they want to trust that they, you know what you're doing, but ultimately they're making a lending decision based upon some key characteristics of the deal and not the specific things you're doing with your patients. So keep that in mind. All right, now what I'm going to do, again, I mentioned this is a free template. You can grab it down in the description and I'm going to scroll through and talk briefly about each section. And then when I come across those key points, I'll pause and we'll dig in a little bit more on those and try to maybe provide some examples. So, all right, first up, we got our executive summary. Think about this as like a cover letter to a resume. If you're applying for a job, um, you know, one page or less hit the high points, you know, what's the name of your business? What's the area you're planning to be serving? Is there a short list of services that you could describe to give a good idea of what you're going to be offering, a quick note maybe on the, the industry itself, and talk maybe briefly about some of the financial projection highlights. So maybe that's your targeted revenue or your when you plan to break even, where your startup costs are, how much of those startup costs are you going to, are you seeking to be in a loan? That kind of stuff can be, can be included in here. Okay. And we will keep moving along to the company description. And this is going to bring us to key point number one, and that is going to be, we want to make sure we highlight our industry relevant experience here. So in your company description, talk a little bit more about who are the owners, you know, who's involved with this, the history, the certification, the experience that you have. Now in an industry like home health care or, you know, non-medical home care, we got to make sure that the lender is confident that we are certified to be able to do what we're doing and that we have some experience and know what we're doing because, you know, we're dealing with the, the well-being of other people and they want to have a degree of confidence that that's not going to be an issue with you running the business. So if you have that experience, either working in a business like this, managing in a business, running one of those businesses, definitely include that. If you don't, make sure you have a partner that does. And if you don't have a partner that does, you better have a key employee or a key, a few key employees that are very familiar with this industry, have experience in this industry because your lender needs to have the confidence that you know what you're doing, you know what you're getting yourself into. So elaborate on that as needed in this section. So that's going to be key point number one. All right, moving along to the market analysis, and this is going to be key point number two. The purpose of this is to demonstrate that there is a need and an opportunity in the market for your business to join. 
if it's oversaturated or highly competitive, then we, you know, this section is gonna have to go a little bit farther and say, well, what are you doing that's gonna be different? What's your secret sauce? How are you gonna disrupt the market and steal a big enough share of the customers to be successful? So that's what we need to outline in this section. Now, for an industry like home care, this might be a little tricky because it's unique to a lot of different industries out there. In general, I feel like there's a pretty good understanding that there is a growing need for senior care, um, given the, the aging of generations um, before us and, and the baby boomers and all of that are obviously large larger generations and there's less and less people in the workforce that are, are serving those, those generations. So it's relatively safe to say that most people understand there's probably a big need for this. Now, that's probably not going to cut it as far as just like saying, well, we all know, you know, the baby boomers are aging out, so they need help. So any tangible examples and research you can give here is going to be ideal. Some basic ways that you can do that to maybe give you some examples is if I ever even just go over to Google. I live in the Indianapolis, Indiana area, and there's a suburb on the northeast side called Fishers. It's a growing area and Maybe that's where I want my business to be because maybe that's where I live. And I'm going to go there and search what services are in my proximity. So I'm going to search that and get my pop-up list here. Now, if I zoom in in different areas, a few more might pop up and some might disappear. But my recommendation to you is to make a list. It doesn't have to be in your business plan. Every business that does what you do or similar to what you do within you know 10 miles, 20 miles, 30 miles, depending upon how far is common to travel to provide a home care service and understand what their services are. What are their price points? and figure out all you can about them so that you can identify where is there an opportunity in this market and yet that there is an opportunity in the market. So that's one way you could go about doing this. Another thing, this maybe this isn't the most ideal way to do this for this industry, but another thing you can think about doing is you can create a free Google AdWords account. So you can use their keyword planner tool. And I set my location to be Fishers like I was describing. And I wanna see how often are people searching for home care services near me, non-medical home care services. And this can show you a few things like what are people searching for? What are the trends in those? Now you can see there's not a ton of search volume for this in that area. I don't think that that means it's not necessary, but maybe it's just not a, a commonly searched thing. But also what I know about the Fishers area is it's a relatively younger residents live there. There's a lot of young families, a lot of young couples. So it may be less common for people to be searching for that there than in your community. So this might be a good thing to check. Are you seeing some growth? You know, this, this is the column I would really focus on year over year change. If I was seeing home care services near me growing, that's a good sign that there's going to be a need. There's going to be demand in that community. So I would check on that. And then how competitive is that? That's people paying for AdWords. How competitive is that advertising environment? So that's something you can do. I also think this industry, there's likely research, um, you know, journals and articles out there that people are probably talking about this at a larger scale. So anything you can find out there to reference, excerpts you can find from that to see the growth rate, all that kind of information you want to put in here. So tangible examples of the market growth is helpful for that section. We really want to identify that there's an opportunity for you to come in and take some of that market. Okay, moving along, services offered. Okay, so here to talk about the section a little bit, this isn't one of the key points, but I will highlight when you're talking about the services and the actual tangible offerings of your business, this section isn't going to make all the difference when it comes to getting approved for a loan, but it can certainly hurt you if you don't put enough effort into it, okay? So your lender's not gonna be an expert on non-medical home care. So they're not gonna know, oh, that's interesting they're offering this and not offering that, or that's interesting they're offering this at that price point, but not this. They're not, they're not gonna dig into it quite like that, but they will be able to tell if it feels like there's not enough detail there, okay? So make sure you spend some time. You know, this is a fictitious, pre-filled out basic template to help give you the structure. So this is not enough information here, okay? Like list your specific services, what those are gonna cost, how you're gonna provide those. It doesn't need to be 10 pages, but you know, probably a good chunk of content there because you wanna make sure when your lender's looking at this that they think, oh yeah, clearly they, they know what they're doing versus, oh, this feels like a little skimpy. You know, maybe they don't know what they're doing, okay? Hopefully you can see my point there. Okay, moving on, marketing and sales strategy. And this is gonna bring us to key point number three, and that is customer acquisition. So we've already talked about how to identify and demonstrate there is a market market, there is opportunity for your business. Now we need to need to demonstrate how are we actually going to acquire those customers from the market. Now, obviously, kind of like the previous section, there's a minimum expectation here of things that they want to see here. They want to see you're going to have a website. They want to see that you're going to post on social media. They want to see that you're going to advertise. They want to see that you're going to do some referral network building. Okay. But what's going to make this section shine and make your business plan have a higher chance of getting approved for a loan is any amount of traction that you can demonstrate. Now, if you don't know what traction means, that means like momentum, tangible examples of work you're already doing so that when the business opens, you're not starting at square one, you kind of have a jump, a jump start when it comes to that. Traction is easier to demonstrate maybe in other industries than non-medical home care, but let me give you an example. Maybe maybe you work as a nurse in a in a med, you know, home healthcare business already or in a nursing home or something like that or a manager in a nursing home and then you start 
On the side, you start doing non-medical home care. So you go into some friends and family's homes, they hire you to come in and spend time with a senior that you know needs some assistance and helping them you know, whatever way they need. And you start building that small customer base, maybe on the side, okay? So maybe you have five people you do that for. That's a great example of traction. So when the business opens, you've already got five customers. Maybe, and five customers and families that are gonna talk about your, your, your work and your business. Maybe you know two or three other people that also work in uh, nursing homes or assisted care facilities, or and they would be interested in joining your business. Maybe they can do the same thing. They can start doing this on the side a little bit, forming their own relationships there, so that when the business opens, you've got a greater you know start there. Another example might be if you're well connected in your in your community, start collecting interested parties to be on your first wait list for when you open because you'll probably have limited capacity. Maybe you can find friends and families that have you know seniors in their care or in their family that they would be interested in, in having a home care service done by you. Start collecting those names. So when it comes to traction, the best thing you can demonstrate, if you're already selling, if you're, only make, if you're already making money doing this thing prior to the formal launch of the business, that's great. Next best thing is names and interested people. Any, any data you can provide, if you say, I've got 37 families already interested upon launch, that is like pure gold that a lender wants to hear. Because not only does that demonstrate, you're probably likely to start making money right away. It also demonstrates your willingness to hustle and to grind and to grow this business into something that's going to be successful. Okay. So anything you can put there is really great when it comes to getting a lender's approval. All right, moving forward to financial projections, which are kind of the, this is the meat and potatoes of your business plan. Now, obviously we might be a little bit biased because financial projections are what we do. But even as, you know, I spent seven years as a lender, financial projections were the most important part of the loan application and the business plan. So we want to make sure they are done well. Now, financial projections themselves are not key point number four. The financial projections are a minimum requirement when it comes to doing a business plan, especially for a startup loan. And I've included in here some examples, total use of funds, startup funds, how they're going to be used, five-year breakdown of some key financial line items, some home care specific data, like new patients, patient turnover, average providers, marketing spend, that kind of stuff. And then I've got sales and profit growth, key ratios, key in industry ratios there. And then I've got a five-year financial performance statement for income statement or profit and loss, projected balance sheet and cash flow. Now, a quick plug, those were all generated using this financial projection template. Now I know it says in-home healthcare, the business plan I'm talking about is non-medical. This template works great for both because you'll be able to delineate between those services and their costs. But this template, which costs less than $100, will enable you to generate all of those automatically, very simply on your own. Now, of course, if you buy a template, we're here to help you and answer questions. But just to show you really quick, you know, all this takes is putting in the things you're going to need to purchase for your, the start of the business. Are you going to have any investors? Are you going to have any business loans? As you fill out the projections, it's going to calculate how much cash do you actually need. Like if you're, if it's going to take 17 months to break even, you're going to have to cover those losses until that point. So you need working capital. What's really special about this template is it's not just going to say, hey, what, how much revenue do you anticipate making? It's actually going to calculate the projected revenue for you using terminology for your industry, right? It's going to help you guess how many patients you're going to have, what's your advertising budget going to be? How much does it cost to acquire a new, a new patient? How many patients can you have? What service... What types of uh, services are you providing? What is their hourly rate? So this is where you can see how you can differ this from like a medical home healthcare versus non-medical is you can obviously take out medical related service providers and we'll be able to price all of our services here. And we can put in our operating expenses. Like how much rent, if, are you paying rent? Your accounting fees, utility fees, do you have salaried employees? And then once you provide that information in the blue boxes, it's gonna generate all of those charts and financial statements for you automatically. So as you edit them, it will automatically update them. Now, as I mentioned, financial projections are expected. So that's not key point number four. Key point number four is, are your projections realistic and within industry expectations? or industry norms, okay? So if you haven't owned this business or been on inside the financial statements of you know a non-medical home care business before, you might be wondering, well, how do I know what is normal or realistic? Very simple answer, go back to Google and just search for it, okay? So let's use the projections we have as an example already. We know things like profit margin are gonna be important, revenue, cost of goods sold, your net income, your startup costs. So what I would do is I would go to Google and say, I think I already have one pulled up for you. What is a typical profit margin for a non-medical home care business? And I could say, you know, there was a time it used to be 50% for private pay. Maybe now there's getting more, there's more players in the market. So 30 to 40% is typical. That's a pretty high profit margin, okay? So let's go back and see what is my model saying? Okay, the first year we're losing money. Very common for a business, you know, to losing money in the first year. And then slowly we start to grow up to 22%, 25%. So that's great. You know, we're, we're well within the range there that it would be not scary for a lender to see that, okay? And you can do that for any, any financial 
financial number, you can go out there and look for industry averages and make sure that you're within that range so that when your lender is looking at your business plan, you can be confident that you're not going to be way out in left field and not have to defend those numbers so aggressively because you know that you're basing it off of industry expectations. Okay, going back to the business plan. Now that section, once you complete your projections, is pretty much going to round out the business plan. You might have a conclusion in there, but you'll notice we're missing one key point. I've only talked about four so far. And the fifth, which is going to be more important if you're trying to get a loan for your non-medical home care business, and that is demonstration and preparedness for skin in the game. Now, if you don't know what skin in the game is, think about when you're buying a home. Your lender that's providing the mortgage is going to expect you to put in a down payment, and they're also going to hold the home as collateral, okay? So if you default on that loan, you're not only going to lose the house, but you're also going to lose your down payment because you're not getting that money back. Very similar to having a business, okay? So let's say your startup costs are $500,000. The bank might say, okay, we will lend 400,000 or 450,000, but you have to put the rest in as your cash injection, okay? You're gonna be required to inject 5%, 10%, 20%, depending upon the lender. Now, you're also gonna be required to have collateral. Now, there are lenders out there who will do unsecured loans, but you're gonna have a much higher interest rate if you're doing that, most likely. It's gonna be more of an aggressive term, okay? so. What type of collateral? A home care business is kind of light on the collateral side because you don't have equipment, probably don't have a building, that kind of thing. So it's likely gonna need to be personal collateral. Can you put a second mortgage on your house? Do you have free and clear vehicles you can pledge? Now, just as a heads up, like when I was a lender all the time, I had people come to me and they said, before we even start, I want you to know, I'm keeping the business and personal separate to protect myself. That's advice they had received. And I said, that's great advice. When it comes to your bank accounts and your accounting, keep everything separate, that's great. When it comes to getting a loan, that's just not gonna happen. It's a very unrealistic expectation to, to understand that. Because from the bank's point of view, they're giving you a lot of money. They need to mitigate their risk. And, they, and so they're protecting their investment. And they also wanna have confidence that they wanna see how committed you are, right? And if you refuse to put your name on the line, something personal that means a lot to you, then you know why should they do the same thing, okay? So I just want you to understand that's to be expected. Now, if you really wanna like surprise your lender, you will say in your business plan, this is what we plan to put as collateral. This is all we can put up for collateral. That's everything we have or whatever, right? Rather than the lender having to chase you to figure out what's gonna be collateral, be prepared to talk about that, okay? That will really impress your lender. And there you have it. Follow those five key points. I promise you your business plan is gonna be as strong as it can be when it comes to applying for a loan. If you have any questions, reach out to us at support at projectionhub.com. I've linked this free business plan as well as the financial projection template down in the description of the video. As a thank you for sticking around, you can grab this 20% off discount code. Use PH20BP. You can get that home healthcare projection template 20% off. I think I might've mentioned, but we have a whole video walkthrough of how to fill up the whole thing, but we would love to be able to help. If you appreciated the video, please like the video, subscribe to our channel if you'd like to see more additional content about growing a business or starting a business. And we hope to be able to work with you. But uh, I wish you the best of luck in creating your business plan and starting your business. Thanks.